What it is, y'all? It is your old boy Pilk, and I'm coming back at you today with more Damachi. And of course, today we're talking about the third level of Familia Royale. It is actually upon us. So let's go in here and talk about this event and basically all the things that you need to know in order to be successful at this. Now, if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And once again, I do want to preface that while I am going to show you a run here, it is not my premium run. I always lay that out there at the beginning. I will tell you exactly what you need to do to be successful at this. But for the sake of this being a competitive event and for the sake of, you know, not taking off my familia, I'm not going to like show you my maximum numbers. I will tell you everything that is absolutely necessary, though, in order for this to kind of get you the most, the biggest bang for your buck, right? So... Let's go ahead and jump in here, and let's talk about this. Now, you'll notice that there's a slight change from yesterday's team, and that is A, Goblin Slayer's in the front, because he's kind of our kind of our premium dude. B, and probably the most important thing here, uh, I've swapped out Elmina for Karumi. Now, the main reason I've done that, and I've also changed assists, I believe. Yeah. So, I swapped out Elmina and Sacred Fire Hestia for Karumi, and which Hestia is this? Uh, I can't remember her name. Buh, 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 buh. Moon Knight Reunion Hestia, Hestia because she does damage received attack type single targets whereas Sacred Flame Hestia does attack type all targets now mine is not ML bead she'd obviously do a little more if she was ML bead it does make a huge huge difference um, the other thing that would be very nice and unfortunately I'm lacking if I'm honest uh is if I had an a mid. A mid will remove your the debuffs on your units, and she will ensure that your units are going to do good damage. Um, unfortunately, my mid does not survive this. My mid only has two dupes, so when it comes to doing this on very hard mode, like I'm going to show you guys, uh, which gives you the most most bang for your buck, uh, basically it's the only way to get like numbers as high as I'm going to be getting here. Um, you have to run on a very hard my mid dies. So it is definitely, definitely important, but <sighs> you know, for the sake of the video and for the sake of all things, I I can't run her because she's not gonna get to as far into this as I would like her to. So let's go ahead and run this. Now, first of all, things to know, okay? He is zero stat for physical and for magic. He is minus 70% uh, for thunder and for dark, just like before. And you'll see that my assist skills have come in here and really made this handy. Now, we're gonna go ahead and continue doing our usual debuff stack. And I'm gonna do the 33% SA gauge charge with uh, Lene. Ooh, even though, and I'm gonna be real here, Lene's uh, charge is gonna be gone on turn three. So if you have a debuffer, that you would like to use here, it actually might be better. Uh, and I actually have one in mind that I'm gonna play with. I haven't done it yet, but I'm trying a few things out, trying to get better numbers, and especially what you're gonna see here. But, you know, it's it's nice. It gets us the essay like maybe half a turn sooner, but I'm wondering if that's even worthwhile, you know? But Kurumi's going to come in here, and she's going to debuff uh, Dark Resistance down minus 35%. And after all these debuffs are in, I'll show you the numbers. It's actually pretty impressive. All right. So notice he just debuffed us. So all of our buffs we have had up there are gone. So in this turn, we've got to go ahead and redo all of our buffs. I'm going to go ahead and do Yosuga on this turn, even though that technically isn't a buff. Uh, but I'm gonna come back. I gotta, I'm gonna do that to keep all of his. See, like we'd lose the strength debuff and all that stuff if I didn't do it. So I'm gonna do it on the next turn and bring it back. Now you'll notice now that physical is down 50%. Uh, dark is down 115%, and that's the most important part. Now we are gonna debuff uh, magic here a little bit as well, but for the most part, that's kind of the important thing here. Now, Recollection Slayers, I think Ryu actually is a magic type, so having the magic debuff is a very, very good thing. But we're re really relying on physical to get 
the majority of our damage. Okay. So, surviving that essay is really important. It really, really is. I can't stress that enough. Um, so, there we go. And we're going to do New Moon with her. Yeah. So, we, we need to make sure that, like, basically all those debuffs don't expire. And we need to make sure everything's golden on him. Now, you notice down there, we do have strength and magic debuffs on our team. That's just what he does, right? So, if I had a mid, this would be a great time to remove those and get a little bit more damage out of those units. Because it is a pretty serious debuff too it's a 30 percent debuff both strength and magic down so it is not a debuff that i take lightly or that feels very good to, to have put upon us but it is what it is so the magic resist 25 down so now we're minus 50 physical minus 25 uh magic and that's all gonna stay in place so and everyone's dark type so we're just gonna basically just hammer down on him. Now turn 7 he'll debuff us again, but until then we're just going to kind of spam these attacks. Let go! Oh, lost my HDMI there. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> my apologies. I still have to take my phone back in for repairs, but finding time to do that with the channel is extremely difficult, so many apologies for that. Alright, turn 6. And that was not an edit or anything like that. That wasn't that wasn't me being tricky. That was literally just the HDMI cable. All right. All right. And turn seven. So all of our debuffs are gone. So we've got to go rebuff. Uh, Goblin Slayer's attack actually is his only buff. So we're gonna do that. Oka. Uh, we're gonna do his major buff there, and we got to do this buff here. So let's go. All right. And once again, the big thing is here, we want to make sure that we survive this. So having all of his debuffs in place and having as many buffs we can in place is going to ensure that. All right. So I'm going to go back and do Shika. And the goal here is to get a triple SA. Because you know, the more SAs you have, the stronger your units hit. Now, there's an exception with the Goblin Slayer, but uh, and I'm sure there's a way to exploit it. I haven't discovered it yet. But, you know... If, you, if you're able to figure that out, more power to you. I just haven't been able to crack that yet. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of our buffs in place. And the next turn, we're going to do a triple SA. There we go. Get them, boys. Get them. Boys in. Ryu. All right. So once again, we're going to do an SA with him. And them, let's make sure none of his debuffs are going to expire and everything's good. So, we're going to do a triple essay with Oka. Now, the reason we're going to do it with Oka is because Oka and Goblin Slayer, they have a combo attack. Um, it's not the greatest or strongest in the world, but it actually is helpful. Now, some of you can already sense what I probably should have done here. Um, and more power to you if you did. Uh, but, once again, for the sake of the video... I'm going to tell you that I didn't do a thing, but there is something that I could have done there that I actually would have gotten more, more damage and been a lot more fun. Now, also, removing debuffs would have been great, too, but once again, my amid won't survive this far into the end of the match, so, you know, that's wasn't really an option, unfortunately. So, that hit would have been a lot stronger. Uh, it was already strong enough, but it would have been a lot stronger had amid been there. It is what it is, guys. It is what it is. Oh, wow. I didn't think Oka would actually hit for a mill. That... Uh, color me impressed. I don't think I've ever seen Oka actually hit for a million. So, Oka himself is pretty good. And that's... Also, remember, 30% debuff. Alright. So right here, if we'd had our debuffs removed, we would have been a, we'd be in a much happier state of being. But right now, we're kind of looking at it's going to take a while to kill him. Unfortunately, oh no no, Did we, we, okay, we got the right criticals. Never mind, he's done next turn. Uh, do that. You know, I'm just going to continue this on, even though they don't have their buffs. There we go, perfect. That was actually a pretty quick. 
pretty quick, uh, quick run. I've had some runs that have gone to turn 13 just because of RNG failures and the, the criticals, but, you know, good numbers up there. I'll go ahead and admit it now. Not my highest number. You can already see it there that it's not my highest number, but it is a good number. And that should show you what you can achieve in this if you're really doing it right. Um, but this is, if you follow my path, you're going to have great numbers regardless. You just may not crack the highest possible numbers. So go back and kind of decode what I was telling you. Put two and two together. You can probably figure out what I'm saying. But either way, good numbers that. And not a bad visually there either. Uh, so on that note, my waifu and I are going to go uh, get married. That's the video, guys. Let me know what y'all thought in the comments section down below. Hit that old thumbs up button. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Don't forget, tonight at 10 p.m., we will have Swole Arm Sunday, the Daimachi live stream. Now, while these videos tend to stay very informative, forewarn the live streams are not quite this formal. So, if you are prepared, it is a lot of fun. Uh, but we are not very mature at all. So, I put on a good front during the videos. No, I don't.